Welcome in once again to Gamecock Central Radio. It's Emerson Phillips joined by Brent Hubbs from VolQuest.com. Brent's going to bring us the Tennessee perspective today heading into the South Carolina-Tennessee game. Noon kickoff Saturday at Neyland Stadium. It'll be on ESPN. Brent, good to have you today. Welcome in. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me, man. Let's talk about Tennessee. Brent, you know, a lot of questions swirling about Tennessee right now, and obviously the biggest story coming into the game this week is the quarterback change. Redshirt freshman Jarrett Guarantano will start for the first time for the Volunteers. He's appeared in three games this year, Brent, and it sounds like the quarterback change is out of necessity for Tennessee. Well, certainly they're just looking for a spark. They're looking for anything to generate some offense when you look at the fact that uh, the last six quarters of football, Tennessee has not scored a touchdown. That's 22 possessions, I I believe, for Tennessee. Uh, Shut out by Georgia. First shut out for Tennessee since 1994. Uh, Quentin Dormany, who's been the starter for Tennessee, uh, leads the conference in turnovers, and they're, they're just struggling offensively. It's not all the quarterback position. There are other works for Tennessee on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, but obviously when you're struggling the way they've struggled on offense the last you know, game and a half or so in particular, uh, Tennessee's looking to get something going, and, and the obvious change there is to make a change at the quarterback position. And that's why we're going to see the red shirt freshman, Jerry Garantano. So Dormady started the first five games through six picks. He had two fumbles. That's eight of Tennessee's ten turnovers. Tennessee is minus four in the turnover margin department, and that's clearly not getting it done. But you talked about other problems that Tennessee's got. And reading on your site, VolQuest.com, this week, you know, I understand there's a lot of concern about the offensive line. And receivers not getting separation and getting open on a consistent basis, Brent. So it's not just been quarterback play for the Vols. No, no question. It, it you know, and look, the quarterback takes too much credit, gets too much credit, takes too much blame um, in a lot of cases. And and look, Quentin Dormady uh, as a starter has made mistakes. You mentioned the turnovers that he's had, uh, some poor red zone efficiency uh, in particular. He's thrown a pick six in, in a conference game when you. You look at it, you know, three turnovers at Florida, three interceptions, a um, couple turnovers against Georgia. It just just struggled in SEC play. Uh, but it, it is the offensive line which has struggled to have continuity. They will start the same offensive line this week that they started against Georgia. That's the first time this season they will have to go on back-to-back weeks with the same starting offensive line. Uh, so you would hope that that would help, you know, Tennessee from a continuity standpoint. Uh, and then the receiver position, Youth at receiver is showing up with the loss of Jawan Jennings. Uh, Tennessee's just got a lot of young players that are trying to figure out how to play the game and trying to figure out how to beat press coverage. And I'm sure Will Muschamp and his defense are, are going to get right up in Tennessee's receiver's face and, and say, hey, beat us one-on-one if you can. And Tennessee has not done a good job of doing that. Marquez Callaway, who had over 100 yards receiving and two touchdowns in the win, I guess Georgia Tech in the season opener has not had a catch in the last two games. And he's been Tennessee's leading receiver up until that point. Uh, so th- they've got to get the, the perimeter game going with the receivers. And we'll see what kind of start Tennessee can get off to, what they can design and draw up to get Garantano comfortable and maybe get some confidence going in a receiver group that's been struggling the last couple of ball games. Tennessee's 3-2 and two overall. They're 0-2 oh in the SEC, 13th in the conference in scoring at just over 24 points a game, only ahead of Vanderbilt in that department. Six straight quarters without an offensive touchdown produced, as Brent mentioned, and 6.1 yards per pass attempt, also second to last in the SEC. So talk about Guarantano's skill set. Brent, you know, how is he different from Dormady, and what does he bring to the table Saturday? Well, I think the biggest difference is going to be uh, the ability to make a play with his feet and his legs. And I, I don't think it's going to be a Josh Dobbs offense where they're going to run him 15 or 20 times in a game. But I think if it's third and three and, and, you know, his first read's not open or his second progression's not open, he can pull the ball down and run it much better than Quentin Dormady can. Now, you know, Jared fancies himself a pocket passer. He is a pocket passer. He's a guy who's he's not just a run-around guy. He's got a really strong arm. I think the thing that he'll have to do and the biggest challenge for him is to get settled down easy. He's a, or quickly, he's a little bit hyper. You know, when he comes into the game, you can kind of see it. Um, he throws the ball really hard. He's got a really strong arm. His touch is going to have to show up in the game on Saturday. And again, they've got to do some things to get him into the rhythm of a game and get him settled in. When you look at, um, he's 12 of 24 on the season throwing the ball in the games he's appeared in. 
but he's completely he's thrown for just over fifty yards in those twelve completions. So he's not stretched the football down the field very far. Tennessee's struggling to stretch the the ball down the field. Can they get some things going with him and, and get the vertical passing game going? But I think the biggest difference that with him and Quentin Dormy is going to be the legs. I think Quentin Dormy is probably is definitely further along mentally. He could do more things check wise at the line of scrimmage than they'll let Garantano do. But I think the opportunity to potentially make a play, a scramble play in a breakdown situation, is much more likely with Garantano than it is with Quentin Dormy. Brent, Tennessee's got a fantastic running back and John Kelly, sixth in the SEC in rushing. And if Guarantano can provide a little bit of balance and you know give Tennessee something in the passing game, that could free up John Kelly for a big day Saturday, averaging about 100 yards a game. Well, and they've got to have him some help. It's been all about John Kelly, and, and Kelly needs he needs help and needs that balance. When you look at Tennessee's offensive production this year, John Kelly accounts for 43% of Tennessee's offensive touches. So if it's a if it's a pass reception. Or it's a rush. Forty three times, forty three percent of the time, it's going to John Kelly. That that's too much. Um, he's a guy who needs a healthy load of touches, but he's got to have some help around him to take the pressure off of him to free him up a little bit. That's why they've got to get more going uh, in this offense. He's been the bell cow. He's been a fantastic player for Tennessee um, all season long. He's made play after play, hard to tackle, runs with a great attitude and great. Um, finishing you know chip on his shoulder if you will just a tough tough football player he's been fun to watch but he's got to have some help and that's the biggest challenge for tennessee on saturday gamecock central radio emerson phillips with brent hubs the publisher of allquest.com brent's bringing us the tennessee perspective today and we hope you have downloaded the gamecock central radio app we've got this free phone app that allows you to listen to our podcast on your cell phone or mobile device you can get it on the App Store and on Google Play. Subscribe to our podcast. Search for Gamecock Central Radio on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or just visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. And take advantage of the Gamecock Central hotline. we got this new phone line set up that allows you to call in and be a part of our podcast. The number is 803-497-9058. 497-9058. You call in. Leave us a voice message about the Gamecock team. If you have a question about Carolina football or about an upcoming opponent, leave us a voicemail, and we'll play a recording of your voice on a future edition of Gamecock Central Radio. Call the Gamecock Central hotline and get involved with Gamecock Central Podcasts. Brent, what's going on with Tennessee in the locker room? You know, a lot of talk about a couple of fights that have taken place uh, in practice, and most recently, Daryl Taylor, Tennessee's best uh, defensive lineman, you know, kicked a, a, a teammate in the face. Brent, what's what's going on here? Well, I think that's the million dollar question. You know, you talk to players, and players say that the locker room's fine. You know, senior Ethan Wolf said, you know, we don't have any issues in the locker room, and the next day, you know, you have the situation where Daryl Taylor. Uh, kicks an offensive lineman, Trey Smith, in the face and sends him to the doctor for stitches. So uh, Butch Jones says his locker room's fine. His leadership is emerging and growing. Uh, but but I think, you know, that remains a, a major question and a major unknown. Uh, I think the biggest question about this team on Saturday is going to be how do they handle adversity? Look, it's a 60-minute football game. Things don't happen according to script all the time. There, there are issues that de- develop. There are mistakes that you know, happen, all of those things. So the question becomes, how does this team handle an adverse situation? Does the leadership pull this team together? Do they come become splintered when things don't go the right way for them? I think that's the question every Tennessee fan has when they go into this game on Saturday. It's just exactly where is the mentality uh, of this football team, and, and where's the togetherness and cohesiveness of them right now? A very interesting piece you've got on VolQuest.com right now about, you know, this is a pride game for Tennessee. How much pride do Tennessee players have left after getting embarrassed at home a couple of weeks ago by Georgia, shut out for the first time since 1994, like you told us earlier? So, you know, very interesting point, Brent. And I've been trying to decide all week, either South Carolina is catching Tennessee at just the right time, or it could be just the wrong time, and I'm not sure – what it is, I suppose we won't find out until beginning at noon on Saturday. Yeah, I'm not sure anybody knows at this point what to expect out of Tennessee. Uh, you know, my point in the column that I had on Thursday is uh, is pretty simple. You know, changing the quarterback isn't going to make this team that's a 104th nationally or 105th nationally in total offense. It's not going to make them the, the New England Patriots all of a sudden or, uh, you know, a, a great offense that they're – not suddenly going to become a great defense coming out of the bye week, but 
what you're going to learn about this team, you're not going to solve all your questions or answer all your questions, but this week will tell you what kind of pride they have. This will tell you where the locker room is. This will tell you where th- this team is and if this team is about team or is it about individuals. What what do we know? So uh, I do think this is a pride game for Tennessee. I, I think that you know if you're if your pride's not wounded from uh, what happened to you against Georgia, if you're Tennessee, then you, you certainly got to check yourself at the door as a competitor. So uh, we'll find out on Saturday. I, I think you could. I think it could be a situation where Tennessee sort of catches lightning in the bottle, makes a couple plays, and boom, takes off running. Or it could be just a struggle all day long for Tennessee to try to get anything going offensively. I, I think Tennessee's defense has to help uh, the offense out in this game. They need to get a turnover. They need to get a short field. They need to do something to help this offense because it's hard to see this offense with a new quarterback and what we've seen out of them to this point driving the length of the field routinely throughout the day against the South Carolina defense and, and putting up points with 12, 13 play type drives. Brent, only two teams in the Southeastern Conference have allowed more sacks than South Carolina. And last week, the Gamecocks ran a patchwork offensive line against Arkansas and actually probably played their best game of the season strangely enough. And Carolina could be getting healthy. I think they're hoping to get a couple of these linemen back for the Tennessee game on Saturday. But I would have to believe that, you know, Tennessee looking at film has got to believe that they can get some pressure on Jake Bentley. Well, I don't think there's any question they want to get pressure on Bentley. But the thing that you have to be careful of with Bentley is you've got to be smart with your pressure. And what I mean by that is you've got to, you've got to try to get some pressure within the gaps. You've got to have containment. Because uh, what we've seen out of Jake Bentley, Tennessee fans saw it last year. And the upset South Carolina had a season ago, um, Tennessee fans and, and college football fans saw it against um, Louisiana Tech a couple of weeks ago. Jake Bentley can make a play with his legs when things break down. So you want to get pressure, but you better get in your rush lanes. You better stay in your rush lanes because if you don't, he will make you pay with his legs. And, and, and that's something Tennessee has to be mindful of. You mentioned Daryl Taylor, who was involved in the fight. He's suspended for this game. He will not play. So Tennessee's down to two upperclassmen defensive ends uh, and Kyle Phillips and Jonathan Tongbo who will get to start. And then it's it's the true true freshman after that. So they're going to have to play with good discipline on Saturday because if they get pinched inside, Bentley's got no problem getting outside the pocket and, and, and breaking contained and making a play by extending it, you know, with his, with his arm and his legs to extend it and throw the ball or just take off running with it. Nobody in the country is on the hot seat perhaps more than Butch Jones. Brent, talk about the perception of Jones among the Tennessee fan base and in Tennessee circles, and do you think he'll be back next year? Well, I think it's too early to say about next year. Uh, we'll see. This is a critical game and an important game uh, for Tennessee. I don't think anybody's denying that. I don't think that that means that if he loses this game on Saturday, news is coming on Sunday. I, I don't think anybody's suggesting that at this point. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how this game plays out. I, I think Butch Jones says it and college coaches say it uh, all the time. It's a week-to-week season in college football. And for Butch Jones, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a week-to-week season. The Tennessee fan base is upset. They're disappointed. Uh, it's not just from the Florida game or getting shut out about Georgia. Uh, th- this comes from last year, losing the game at South Carolina, losing the game to Vanderbilt. You know, this time a year ago when these two teams met, Tennessee was in the catbird seat to go to Atlanta for the SEC and represent the SEC East. They had wins over Georgia and Florida. At one point last season, they were 5-0 and and ranked in the top 10. And, and, and they didn't hold it together down the stretch of the season. And, um, they were favored to beat South Carolina, didn't get it done. Favored to beat Vanderbilt, didn't get it done. So instead of being in Atlanta or being in the Sugar Bowl, Tennessee finished on a down note and has followed it up this year with, with a you know a three and two start and had a chance to beat Florida, should have beaten Florida and, and didn't get it done. So that's where the disappointment lies in the Tennessee fan base right now, and uh, they're not very happy with Butch Jones, and, and we'll see what happens moving forward. I don't think it's, again, I think in terms of him being back next year, I think it's going to depend on how the next few weeks play out. Last five meetings between these two teams, settled by three points or less. Very interesting stuff today, and it figures to be an interesting matchup on Saturday. Brent, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it, man. All right, that's Brent Hobbs with VolQuest.com. If you're looking for information on the Tennessee football team, we invite you to visit our Rivals Network partner, VolQuest. Brent Hobbs is the publisher of VolQuest.com. We appreciate his time today, and we thank you for joining us. I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. (laughs) 